today I am taking up chapter number 12 alternative forms in the previous chapter we have learned that the curved strokes the r sound may be represented by writing a small hook initially inside the curve that is for 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 dhar shar jar etc in the same way large hook l is added by writing a large hook initially hal wal thal shal this while writing we write this with the left motion that is why we call them as left curves this fall wall also we write with the left motion so we call them left curves sometimes what happens is when we join these forms to other consonant it will not give good joining even if it is joined they give awkward joining so in such cases we use alternative forms to represent these in the previous chapter we might have observed that downward r stroke s and stroke z are not given initial hook because these forms have been used to represent alternative forms for forward etc he takes the downward r he gives the initial hook and he calls it second form of fur the right r thick give a small hook it represents the second form for var for s he gives initial hook r he will not call it as s r but he he has given the name as second form of thar z he gives initial hook doesn't call it as zar but he calls it as second form of dhar so in this way the alternative forms are form in the same way l also he takes down and r gives large hook he calls it as second form of fall right same thing tick gives the hook and he calls it as second form of wall then yes he gives it large hook he gives it as second form of thal for shar and jar there is no alternate form only we use this form only left curve only in the same way for this thal and shall thal and shall there is no left curve it is always written like this only there is no alternate form for thal and shall now let us see how to represent these rep- alternative forms by way of examples first let us take for var thar and then dhar so those, these are all left curves because while writing we write with the left motion when these forward thar are standing alone that is when no other consonants are attached to these forms 
D. If the vowel precedes, you have to write left curve. If vowel follows, you have to write the right curve. For example, offer before for vowel is there. It is written first for. Free after for vowel is coming. It is written second comb. Afray before fur oval is there. So they write first form. Fray after fur oval is there. We write the second form. This is the first rule. This rule applies when fur words are etc. are standing alone. That means when they are not attached to any other consonant. Suppose these forms. or attached to any other consonant, then the rule is we have to give preference to the second curve first. Then we have to join the consonant. If they give good joining, you retain that form. If it doesn't give good joining, then only we write the first form. For example, you take Friday. Now here fur is not standing alone. With fur there is consonant D. So according to the rule, you try to write the second form first, join the consonant. Here what happens? It doesn't give good joining. Only in such cases, you have to write the first form so that you can get a good joining. So we have to give always preference to the right curve when it is added to some other consonant. Other examples. Frame after for over is there, second form. Frail, second form. Frack, second form. Thread, thur and d. Throb, thur and b. So, we always give preference to the right curves first. Only when it doesn't give good joining, then only we write the first form of Farvathar, etc. Next is second form of uh, Fal and Wal. For Tal and Shal, there is no alternate form. So we always use this left curve. Now let us see when we have to use this left curve and when we have to use this right curve. After upward stroke, that is re v ye he if fall or well comes you must always write second form of fall or well example rifle re is an upward stroke so fall is written Second form. We will we is an upward stroke. Well is second form. Next term. After K, G, and N, this full or well, we use the right form of full and well. Example K will C A V I L K horizontal. Well is second form. Naval N horizontal. Well, second form. Gravel Gur. Well, second form. Next is intervening ovals.
intervening movers. So what we mean by intervening mover? See, when we write this par, bar, tar, dar, char, jar, kar, gar, etc. or har, var, tar, dar, etc. or fal, wal, tal, shal, etc. What does it imply is there will be no vowel between hook and the consonant. That is in par, when we pronounce par, between p and r there will be no vowel. But in some words, between the hook and the consonant, the vowel comes. That vowel is called as intervening vowel. So we should know how to mark the intervening vowels. First, let us take dot vowel, which comes between hook and the consonant. Take the example. Challenge between Ch and L, there is dot vowel O. So, if you write a hook, if you write a vowel here, what happens? After chal, you have to read a vowel. But we want the vowel to be read between the ch and l hook. Then how to represent is, you write a small circle. If there is a first place dot vowel, you write a small circle opposite to the hook. If there is l hook, you write at the left hand side. If there is r hook, you write at the right hand side. So the small circle at the first place represents that there is a first place dot vowel between the hook and the consonant. In the same way at the respective places if you write small circle it represents that second or third place dot vowel comes between hook and the consonant. You take other example. Dark. D plus O plus R plus K. Between D and R, there is O. We write it dar and K. Between D and R, first place dot vowel is there. We write a small circle. Here R K is at the left hand side. We write a circle at the right hand side. Sharply, here P L between ish and R, there is our word. You write a small circle and the opposite to the hook. So it means that our vowel has to be read between ish and R. Next, about the dash vowel. When a dash vowel comes between hook and the consonant, what we have to do? For example, between hook and the consonant, if a dash vowel comes, you have to cut. For example, if a first place dash vowel comes, as in corner. Kar and nar. There is a dash vowel between k and r. So you write a small cut that dash vowel in the beginning. That represents That represents that there is a first place dash vowel between hook and the consonant. Another example. Q. 
coarsely. Kar, surplus, L. Between K and R, there is vowel. If you mark here dash vowel, how to read it? After kar only, you have to add o, grossly. But we want coarse. Between K and R, we want vowel. So what we do is, we cut that dash vowel in the middle. So that also indicates that second place vowel, dash vowel is there. That has to be read between hook and the consonant. Nally, uh, suppose if a u diphthong between comes between hook and the consonant, then how to represent that? Take the word lecture. L K tar lecture between T and R, there is u diphthong. Now, if you write u diphthong here, how do we read? After tar only, you have to read that u diphthong. But to indicate that u comes between t and r, what we have to do is you cut that u diphthong at the end here like this. That means you have to read u diphthong between t and r. Now you have to write the outline for lectures. That is when s comes at the end. What you have to do? Now L K tar circle. Now between T and R U comes. I told you that it has to be cut at the end. But here at the end we have written circle. There you cannot cut. Then how to indicate that U comes between T and R is? You write that U diphthong below that circle. That also represents that U diphthong has to be read between T and R. In case of monosyllabic word, if an intervening vowel comes, we should not use the hook. We have to write the consonant L and R in full. Monosyllable means if we make only one attempt to pronounce a word that is called as monosyllabic word, that is it will have only one syllable in that word. In such monosyllabic word, if there is an intervening vowel, we should not use the hook. You have to write the consonant L and R in full. For example, pair. Now it is a monosyllabic word. So you should not write for a small circle at the second place like this. So what you have to do? You have to write in full P and R. Tear. T A R E. Tear. Here also you should not write tar second place dash over. Because it is a monosyllabic word, you have to write T and down and R. Next, because for per, pair you write per, it represents a grammar, principle, etc. Tar, tear, if you write tar, it represents the gram log, tar, truth. So to avoid this, this rule is made. In case of monosyllabic word, if the intervening vowel comes, we should not use the hook. You have to write the consonant L and R in full. That ends this chapter. Thank you. <coughs> now, gram logs in this chapter. If you write 
pull through the line, it represents people. If you write tick bell through the line, it represents belief, believe, believed. If you write tell on the line, it represents tell. If you write tell through the line, it represents till. Next thick dull on the line. If you write, it represents deliver, delivered, delivery. Gel above the line, it represents largely. Skull above the line represents call. The same thing, call on the line represents equal or equally. Ver above the line represents over. Ver through the line, it represents however. Well above the line, it represents valuation. So, you write these ground locks one page each at the same time. <coughs> Whatever gram locks have come in the previous chapter also, you write one line each. Then, exercise 43 and 44 that is given in page 55. As I already told you, in previous chapters, first read the outlines, copy the shorthand outlines and transcribe it. Check with the key given at the end. If you have made any mistakes, you write those outlines several times so that you will not repeat that again. Exercise 44. You open the key, there you will get the shorthand outlines. So read those shorthand outlines. Copy those shorthand outlines and transcribe them. Again, you check up with the key that is at the page 55. If you have made any mistakes, you write them several times so that you will not repeat the same mistake. Now, I will give the dictation. Exercise 45. Get ready. Dear sir, I believe you are proposing to buy some house property in Beverly. If this is so, I shall be pleased to call and show you details of Waverly House and Crowther Grange and other desirable houses which I wish you would look over. Full stop. If you will tell me just what you desire. I think I can suit you. Full stop. I shall, however, leave all details till I see you. If it is largely a case of low price, as I gather it is, I know I can offer you value equal to any and with early delivery of the premises in all cases. Full stop. I specialize in valuation business and this brings me into touch with just the right people for your 
purpose faithfully yours next exercise 46 i will give the dictation get ready start have you ever noticed what useful lessons you may receive through a shrewd look at the faces of the people you come across in traveling you will see in them humor and gloom generosity and miserable stinginess pluck kind nervous fear wisdom and simplicity you will notice the drinker and the abstainer the flighty and the modest the pilferer and the honest fellow the loafer and the worker full stop five minutes in a tramway car may offer us many lessons if we care to take them after taking dictation as usual how we have to practice is you read exercise 45 short and outlines are there you read first time if you find any difficulty in deciphering any outline you see the key and then you take several readings so that you will be in a position to read the short hand outlines at a higher speed in the same way exercise 46 you open the key where the short hand outlines are given you read the short hand outlines copy the short hand outlines transcribe the short hand outlines try to read the short hand outline at a higher speed and then you take the dictation it becomes easy thank you